Hello, ladies. Hold on. I'm trying to catch up on the chat. Oh, yay. Matnat's got makeup powders. Awesome. So, hi, Matnat's. Matnat's. Hi, uh... MCATS, hi Karen, hi Elaine, thank you for making it, hi Sharon, hi Hirasuna. Okay, so what I wanted to show you in the first uh, part of the Easter egg thing is how to do a proper base on um, your covering an Easter egg plastic easter egg in order to be able to do to cover it with polymer clay and make it pretty now um before anything um hi linda hi sarah what you need to know is that yes these east plastic easter eggs are absolutely safe to put in the oven after you cover them with polymer clay but you at the same time you have to be careful about certain things and do certain things in order to get a nice round i don't have this is my only easter egg that's left it's a actually a four stone egg in order to get it to be nice and round and uh, as flawless as possible right and um uh, I, I'm actually, I've been doing some experiments on making a type of Fabergé egg style that can be opened and you can put stuff in it and would sit on a musical box, but that's a dream of mine. Okay, I'm still at the stage of, because I don't want to leave the plastic inside. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out how to do the the whole egg shape without leaving the plastic inside so one of the things is that these plastic eggs when you close them no matter how well you snap them the moment you press on them they will open so what do you mean burnishing yeah, you sand it after it's done, of course, you sand it and you can either varnish it or uh, buff it. But the thing is that you have to be prepared for this thing, for the fact that, because you don't want to cover it with a very thick um, layer of clay, otherwise it would be a lot to, to work to maintain it the same thickness and it won't be very even but as i said covering it with a thinner layer it's because polymer clay is still quite flexible the moment you by mistake might um, press on it a little bit it's going to open inside the polymer clay and it's going to crack your polymer clay the other thing that uh, you have to think of is this little hinge because no matter what you do it's going to show up uh, now should you put a polymer clay layer thick enough to cover it not necessarily because you can do a very simple thing and that is let me grab my eyeglasses and that is simply cut the hinge off resin base for what and if it's still any a bit protruding you can go ahead and just use one of those diamond nail files and uh, file it off and then you close it really good 
and you will need masking tape only masking tape the kind that is paper right do not use plastic because not all the, the plastic tapes can survive the oven properly why would you I mean it's like a hundred times more expensive to use polyester resin and I don't know if polyester resin survives the oven some epoxy resins do but polyester resin I, pre I, I suspect would give off some really nauseous fumes Well, these ones uh, I said and you can find it in my Amazon influencer store I bought a, a bag of 50 like four or five years ago Finnegan so what you do is you cover with tape the opening and yes you will have some of these crinkles so what you'll have to do is to flatten them really really good and now you don't have to worry that the egg is going to open anymore <coughs> then the other thing that you need to be very very aware of is the fact that you have to be very careful not to trap air and your biggest uh, thing will be to actually put because these are the dangers this is the danger zone actually make sure that before you do anything else and you can do that on the inside before you put the egg together and I didn't think about it my, my bad I usually do that before I put them together just make sure that you cover these little holes as good as you can and make them flat better if you do it on the inside I'll do that with the other egg okay now because what happens when you don't pay good attention to number one this is an egg and I did this on purpose this is an egg that did not have the uh, hinge cut off this is how it would look like so you might have some issues and then this is an egg that was not well um, stuck the clay was not very well stuck on it so it bubbled up so you have to be very 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 careful with that um, the other thing is that yeah you can I mean just to bake it you can just bake it on a when it is not covered I mean I'm talking with the mud clay covered with mud clay you can just bake it on a slightly crumpled paper towel but then when you start decorating it your best bet is to make and I showed before when I, I have a tutorial out there that's called uh, baking blanks and I showed how to make bases in order to bake stuff that's made on um, light bulbs and they are pretty easy to make using aluminum foil because if you want to have the least deformation on your egg you want to work one half first and then bake it and then turn it around and put it on the base and uh, decorate the other half and bake it of course you will have to sand it afterwards uh, just to make it perfectly <coughs> excuse me perfectly smooth but uh, theoretically the easiest way to cover up and I'm going to 
grab my paper towel here because I'm going to need it is to prepare yourself and don't go for the thinnest setting this is on like a four or a five no this is too thin it's on a six let me grab it on a four Okay, so it's on a four on a makings and what you need from it is to be as wide as the egg and I'm going to get with it a couple times more through the machine And of course it needs to be as long as the egg but this is pretty much what you need and you can measure it and trim it oh, where are you there we go. so And you don't even need a lot of uh, measuring and all that to do it this way. And obviously you're going to put a little bit of bacon bond on the plastic egg. And if you're wondering why you need to cover that uh, little hole is because air gets hot faster than the polymer clay and of course it's going to start dilating and it's going to try and escape because this is why we get air bubbles this is why we don't want to um, trap air so it's going to create an air bubble in that area so just keep going nice and all around it it doesn't have to be a thick layer okay you don't have to worry too much about it and then kind of place the egg right in the middle and gently roll it and now we have the two sides meeting in the middle you can feather it a little bit so that you'll have a nice ending now what do we do with these because these are a little bit unsightly first and you want to avoid doing that on the joint so I'm going to go like this and then I'm going to go like this this has to stay up so pretty much make kind of like a pouch here and then make sure that it's well molded on the egg and then you come with the scissors and yes you can use scissors to cut clay all day long without a problem this part let's do the other end and again don't start with don't ever push down the the joint part so start right near it bring it in go on the opposite side bring it in and then goes in go in the middles bring it in and pretty much the same here and bring it in 
and then gently mold all these on the egg. And it is better to, I mean, this is more desirable than leaving uh, clay, than leaving extra clay, allowing for extra clay to be there. Like, see, here I need to go in and trim some more, because I got a little moundy thing and here too just check around okay and now we can start thank you Donna yeah liquid clay is fine bacon bond is uh, less expensive than liquid clay but if you don't have bacon bond and you cannot afford to get it then just go ahead and use liquid clay bacon bond is pretty much like a liquid clay but with a little bit more adhesive so what i do now is i simply feather up and and you have to be very careful don't push too much with the opposing with the fingers on the opposing side because you're going to leave dents so do very gentle feathering on all these areas and the better you even out your base, I mean the egg being covered with mud clay, the easier it will be to put stuff on, on top. Hi Bernadette, hi Sonia. Let's see, and this is where you can see if you have too much. because bringing it towards the top will make the extra stand out and then you can go back on feathering it and at the same time you can feel if you have any when you do this you can feel if you have any tr air trapped in start gently rolling and the top and the bottom are the more the most important ones and don't press too much because if you press too much you're going to press the clay off the on a flat off the plastic underneath so just go on all over and your best bet after you bake it is to to lightly sand it do not go with a high grit go with like even a 240 but if you don't have a lower grit just go with a 400 because what you're interested in now is to make it easy for the what you have on top 
to a deer. I think I have a, I do have a little air here. You'll feel the air because it will start kind of floating around, moving from one area to the next when you're, while you're trying to feather it out nicely. But yeah, as a general idea, you might spend more time on uh, on doing the base nice and smooth than on doing the covering. And I mean, it's entirely up to you. You're gonna spend either time smoothing out the base or you're going to spend time smoothing what you're going to cover the base with. but this is pretty much good because whatever uh, don't let too many <laughs> thank you Julie hey Vince don't lay, let uh, things be too far to the bumps be too big you, little bumps are okay because uh, you're going to remove them real easy with sanding and I don't know, maybe tomorrow or uh, tomorrow, next Sunday, I will bring the the sander here. But uh, theoretically, this is what you need to do. And you need to uh, gently kind of scrunch a paper towel and then place it there and bake it. Oh, les je t'ai pas vu. Il y a longtemps que je t'ai pas vu, hein? Ok. Next. And we are going to just make some super simple uh, little canes that work beautiful covering eggs. So, I'm going to grab some white. And you can do Skinner blends as well, if you so wish. Oops. I'm going to grab some black. So, a pretty black white with the hair. I swear my cats are horrible. Kato? Ah, uh, je comprends ça. Okay, and then we can choose a happy color if you want. So like a light blue or um, what was the name? Wisteria. I'm talking primo. Uh, or you can get a fuchsia or make it with uh, white. So uh, make a Skinner blend with white. So let me just do that real quick. And I'm talking about very easy to make canes, very simple canes, not expensive, uh, not um, not expensive. Oh my God, I'm having a brain fart. Not taking a lot of time. That's what I essentially mean. Okay, so I'm going to do this real quick and you don't have to do it super duper important, flawless. And gently fold it. And then fan it. And flatten. I'm 
going on a thin so that uh, a thin setting so that I can start rolling yeah I thought that it's gone by now wasn't it because it's the 3rd of April hold on I had 17 flares but I thought that they were gone let me check on space weather a proton flux but not a and it only affects radio frequency so no No, there's not even... Hold on, let me switch to display. There's not... You can see it's April 3rd. It's very, very, very low. We do have proton uh, flux, but no... Everything else was over. So, it's something else. <laughs> Not the, not the geomagnetic storm. Okay, so let's get back into it. It didn't affect much in my area. I can tell you that. I didn't even feel it. to do is to cut it so I can get it into a longer strip and very well make sure that it's well stuck otherwise it will go Yeah, I was thinking one time it was funny because had this lady one time messaged me I was like, how can you she was talking about my pre-recorded tutorials how can you 
you do things so fast and so good I can barely move my hand and I'm like what 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 I'm like well I'm looking at your videos and your hands move so fast and yeah I just enhance the speed of the video <laughs> it's not how I move <laughs> it's just enhancement okay and I am going to actually make two out of this. I'm making it more cube-like right now. And note where the middle is, right? So the middle is here. from the middle to the corner and again from the middle to the corner and now we have two <coughs> oh I did a lot of stuff for a living <laughs> different things I had my last Two jobs where uh, the last job I had was at the a senior independent center. I was an activity director and it was a part-time job and I wanted a part-time job because at the time I was making websites. It was the time before, so we are talking about 2008-2009. It was the time before the what you see is what you get. You can make your own website in five minutes for free. So I needed, because it was a weird kind of part time that also had some benefits. And I also needed a steady income because the stuff with making the website, I would I could have a month in which I would make 10 grand and another month in which I would make 400. So, and then the one before that was, I was the uh, administrative specialist at the uh, State Department of Emergency Management and I did take quite a bit of I have some credits in emergency management as well as in weather stuff hey Carla I'm sorry I thought I hope things are will get better for you okay is this white? No, it's not white. Give me just a second. I need more white. I thought I had it, but it's fur. I was like, hey, I do have my white ready. No, it's not the white. I apologize. I wish I needed an alarm to wake up. And I have an internal alarm that any time between 5 and 5.30, and that is during daylight savings because in winter it's between 4 and 4 30. say hey it's time to wake up and I cannot sleep longer than that so that's why I try to be in bed by 9 going to make some band um, uh, canes and what is a band or line canes however you want to to call them or bar canes however you you want to call them and uh, the idea is that in order to cover an egg and you'll find that 
um, even when it comes to because you probably know that about the pisanki uh, that's the ukrainian name but that is uh, painting easter eggs is something that's traditional for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years oh actually i do have several degrees <laughs> just in stuff that's very unrelated like yeah it went good like i have a master's of science in comparative religions to give you an example um but anyway um so uh, talking about the um, the painting eggs thing the painting eggs uh the eggs are done usually um there's a specific specific tool there is no translation and i actually do not know the english name for that part there's a like on the horse's foot right above the the hoof there's a little spot that kind of has can move like this in romanian it's called kishica um, and that's how the painting tool is and what the painting tool is made out of it's practically two sticks with uh, some horse hair that's tied well and then caught between the sticks you know kind of like this of course it's cut here it's just a little bit and but it's like a, a type of paintbrush but it's held between two sticks so that you hold it like this on the egg you hold it like this and you paint like this on the egg because the that those horse hairs go down there and it is done by uh, the egg painting is done by um, actually covering the egg with designs made with black wax as that little paintbrush is dipped in a black wax and then you start uh, the design you can sometimes the design start on a white egg sometimes they uh, start on a egg I have no idea how it's called uh, sometimes they start on an egg that has already been uh, dyed yellow but the way that it works so you first do a first set of designs then the egg goes into a color be it yellow or be it uh, blue or red or whatever and then you draw some more designs on it and then the uh, egg goes in another color so with each application what is under the wax uh, stays uh, of the color that is on the red egg there and some eggs end up being even black because of so much uh, let me actually try and find but the more intricate eggs are in the part of Bukovina that's right s on the northern past part of uh, um of mania and they are quite a bit of um egg painting that got that's more modern like for example uh, you can uh, get some leaves from the garden uh and get some some pantyhose old pantyhose and then you get uh, you cut the pantyhose in pieces like this and you get a knot at the end and then you put the boiled egg inside and then you put some uh, leaves of whatever spring stuff you know and then you cut the other you uh, knot the other end and then you put the eggs uh, like that 
in the dye so the areas that where the the leaves were stay uh, white uh, then in other areas they still uh, uh, they still use just a second they still use natural um, uh, dyes like boiled um, boiled um, yellow onion um, peels hold on I'm trying to show you uh, I'm not going to show too much because I don't want to get in trouble see that's the the tool that I was talking about some mo more more modern they are just using uh, something from a pen But you can see how she puts the first design on there and then the egg goes in um, the paint the color the first color and then the second design is applied and it goes in a different color And then more and more and more designs are applied and uh, go in different colors and the end is this. But where I wanted to, to get with where exactly I was going by telling you all this, um, the thing is you can imagine that this has been done for hundreds and hundreds of years and the way to paint an egg is dictated not just by tradition and symbolism because there's a lot of ancient symbols on the on the painted eggs i mean you can find the tree of life you of course you can find the sun symbols you can find the grain symbols symbols of fertility um symbols of protection all kinds of symbols and generally a lot of people say that oh no the the, the egg being divided in four parts is because uh, it's the four elements when the person the universe with the four elements the four cardinal points with the person in the middle yes that is true too but uh, the most important thing is that in order to properly uh, paint um and hold the egg properly without it being um moving or whatever your best bet is to first start round and then turn it 90 degrees and do another round right and then divide it with another line in half and then once you do these things you can start building on each of the uh, crosses of lines that you have here you can start building all kinds of motifs um, so if you are a beginner in the covering plastic eggs with polymer clay the best thing is to uh, Start with that thing in mind and also because as I told you it's easier to if you don't want to smudge or to make any kind of mistake pushing lines and all that you'll have to cover your egg in two series so twice you first do one half you bake it and then you can turn it around do the other half and bake it on those little supports that you can make and the thing is that if you start with lines then it's very easy to continue the line from the middle 
and finish the other half and you will have very super super pretty uh, <coughs> uh, designs on your egg so for that and in order to to do those lines properly you need the cane bars cane lines cane baguettes however you want to call them and that would be a line of repetitive pattern and this is what we are going to do and for the next time and if you want to be ready for the next time i'm going to do uh the same kind of stuff see here i used white and fuchsia and then i'm going to use um, one of the colors that is splendid on uh, it's very spring-like and is splendid on on uh, covering easter eggs is wasabi so make another uh, a wasabi and white and then you can also make um um a blue but either make it very very light if you do if you use turquoise it's easier but if you want to use ultramarine put about one quarter of the amount that i used uh, fuchsia on the on the white so you should go like uh remember considering the square we consider the square that square cutter divided in four so you can use the full you know this would be one part uh but it depends if you want to do just a one egg or two you don't have to make that much so you can divide this and consider each quarter a part so for ultramarine you'll need three parts of white for one part of ultramarine so going forward with this I'm going to actually do two bars and I need some black clay that I'm not going to keep on the thickest setting because I don't want it to be over bearing so I'm going to put it on a 3 setting on the pasta machine. And don't avoid black when decorating an Easter egg. Because as you have seen in the tradition that there is black. I mean, um, the Easter eggs are the symbol of rebirth and in order for something to be reborn it had to be either dead or uh, in a state of hibernation and that is what the black stands for it's a coming to the light uh, kind of stuff let me get this a little longer And I'm going to do the white the same. Okay, so first I'm going to wrap this and it is a little bit too wide and this one is not as wide as the, the other one. Yeah, it's not much left till Easter. Yeah, it's still too, too wide. I was trying to thin it out, but it didn't work too good. Okay, so 
wrap this around and this will be a micro cane okay and then we are going to use a white which is again too white too wide. No matter what I do, it is too wide. And then one more black. And this you will need only for those bars, okay? You can use any other cane that you have around the house for the rest of the egg. But we are going to start with these bars. This is a way of making them. And let's do the same thing for the other color the other thing here. Now, theoretically, these go one next to the other, but obviously kind of like this, but we are going to add an extra little motif to it. theoretically these would go like this to create the bar right but as I said we are going to give it an extra thing just you know to make things more interesting and I'm making a white and you can put another color you know, I mean, it's actually, remember I did this for the lilac flowers, so it's wisteria and white. So, I am going to make a, a little sausage here. And I actually need two of which one will be cut in half. All right, so. Mm. 
you can use all kinds of things for this part uh, and I'm going to use something else for this part because I cannot find my small cane bender so let's go ahead and use a little dowel because it's about the same size so I'm going to give it a like this a little and let me see where this goes here because you want them to be on the same so it would be here I'm going to enhance it a little bit and do the same thing on the other side trying to keep the same the same area so whoop, just to make my sign where it goes yes it's going to deform a little bit the triangle but it's fine so one of them is going to go in between these two and the other one is going to be cut in half goes here and the other half goes here now we are going to have to pretty much reduce it as a diamond which is not very diff difficult it's just slightly different from you can keep these cut these in half and reduce them as triangles if you want i'm just showing you how to do a diamond cane reduction so make sure that they go together well here and that the corners don't go forgotten and it's all until you're able to cut and connect at the end that's all that you need oh remember that i told you that i like to start my uh, the the most oh, somebody got their cat huh. um, um, I was telling you that my most comfortable to start when reducing is an inch or at most at the smallest would be three quarters of an inch but remember that I did the challenge before and I think it was what a quarter of an inch and I was doing uh, poinsettia cane if I remember right so at this point I think I am good so let's cut this in half and get rid of a little bit of this maybe not yet okay so This has to go like this, right? I am going to cut a little bit of the extras here, just so that you can see better what I'm doing. Okay, now, remember what I said that it's a little bit difficult until you manage to cut the ends 
and you only need to cut one end and that will be this one you can start that do this from the start if you want I mean it's fine I mean you can st cut one of them and put them together but I prefer to do it this way and now we can start on the Barret. Yeah, I thought so. That's what I said. <laughs> Somebody's cat got on the on there. So you have to reduce your bar should be about at most one centimeter centimeter. So that is a little bit thicker than uh, it's kind of like between a quarter. It's like one third of an inch practically. The smaller you can reduce it, the better it is, obviously. Uh, designed to make even more miniature intricate designs on your egg but and you can do other um, patterns as well just don't reduce it don't cut it more before reducing because it's going to be once it gets smaller it's going to be pretty hard to do the on the side part and remember i told you that i still have the crappy white which explain the explains the extra the wastage that I'm getting as I normally in everyday things I don't waste a lot of clay when I'm caning but almost there oh yes cats especially if it's now not when not no nothing they, they don't accept any kind of ifs and buts cats have to have the the attention right then and there and they don't listen you can yell to a dog yeah but not to a cat. The cat is going to just look at you like, huh, I don't care. You need to pet me now. Alright, so. I got a little bit confused at the ends. And there we go. Still confused. Alrighty, and I'm going to go by measuring because I'm not going on this one I'm not going to be eyeballing. So got a five and a half, so that's like one and a quarter.
I miscalculated on something, but this end is really messed up, so that's okay. So next you just make sure that you have the the thing properly connected the end to end and we got a bar and you can place an extra black little line on top of and on the bottom, on the top and on the bottom of it, if you want. Or you can just leave it like this. I would go for the extra thin sheet. make things a little bit tidier I think I showed you once how to make a tartan ribbon like cane like this didn't I what happened Carla why don't you have a place to live Cats, trust me, cats don't have to have had a bad life before. They are like that no matter what. And I hope things are getting better for you, Carla. Can you imagine that? Uh, sealers, it depends on what your, your end result is. I mean, depending, depends what you want to do because you have a whole bunch of, uh, of uh, choices out there. Do you want to make something shiny or you want just to seal a surface treatment but leave it not very shiny? Uh, you can use anything that's satin and you can use the... My simplest to go to is the water-based mean wax. Um, just be very careful because on the satin the non-glossy ones you have to stir them really really good hi tina you have to stir them really really good otherwise all, all those particles that make it to not be shiny will stay at the bottom um the more expensive one is uh, the golden varnish that also can uh, Oh, goodness. And you aren't able to find anywhere else? So, to get back, um, instead, if you want to do something that is similar to resin, but on curved surfaces, you can use liquid clay, translucent liquid clay, and I would give the, my, the best, in my opinion, is the Kato poly clay. Um, if you want, again, if you want just to seal um, and not leave it very shiny, you can also use the Renaissance wax. 
um, you can use the simple scalpy glaze especially if you need to rebake that thing because most of the other varnishes cannot be baked so it it all depends on what you you try to do yeah i had a friend who was like oh my god everything i'm asking you you always answer with it depends well because it depends on what what you want i um you can also and i have a um, a tutorial on how to make shellac varnish that is one of the the um, shiniest varnishes is the kind of stuff that's used for uh, pianos so it 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 all depends but you can also use soft resin that one works on round surfaces I do have a, if you look in the Mokumegane list, you will find a um, tutorial that is with the reddish um, necklace. And on that one, uh, you can see how to apply the Kato poly clay, liquid clay. And... Uh, I am I am really sorry but I'm going to have to cut it off right now because I'm starting to be in pain. I've been on for longer than an hour. And I don't know Karen, maybe you can uh, post on my Facebook page on Kalyana's Facebook page so we can maybe come together and try to find something for you. Yeah, it depends on many of them on which of them you're talking about. Hold on, let me check. Yeah, all prices are going up. I would say just go to Kato Poly Clay, to liquid clay. It would be the, you, if you have a heat gun, that would be your, and I think that uh, Trish with Poly Clay Play has it. So let me check on the, on the resins Two and a half ounces is 13, 14 bucks. The the authentic maybe got more expensive. No, it's 13 bucks. Okay, remember that you go on my Oh shoot, there we go. You go on my uh, influencer store, and if you go in the resin, let me get on display. So you go and look at the resin and kits because I separated the resins. It was getting too big and uh, Amazon wasn't showing anymore. So if you go to the resin, the first will be the uh, a two part resin. And the only soft two part was at, I found was at Sophie and Toffee in France, I think they are. Uh, and then on the UV resin, first are the is the hard one. But then see you can find the soft one, and I don't see it getting. It's not. It didn't go up in price that much. I think the last time I bought it, oh, the authentic is. 
it's not. It's not that. Let me check. Yes, my last order was cat food. Let me see how I bought my Aventix. So So it was the 1656. Yeah, it went up by 30 cents. So I think that you can easily it, it didn't go up in price so we are we are good okay so I will see you next uh, and again considering this is a line um, I showed you with Primo but I suggest uh, you either put it from time to time and and I hope you have a better white um, to the fridge because with this white this is why it got all clear but your best bet is to use female professional or even Kato if you can work with Kato. But remember, for precise lines, your best bet is female professional. So I really need to go lay down right now because I'm hurting. So I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, next Sunday, we are going to um, cover up an egg with this kind of stuff. And... Easter is on the 17th, right? Or when is it? And don't go, how come you don't know? It's because I'm Eastern Orthodox and my Easter is usually is different. Yeah, it's on the 17th. My Easter is usually on a different day. So on the 12th, on the 10th, uh, next week, we are going to cover the egg. And then on the 17th, I'm going for Easter. I'm going to have that um, uh, $100 gift certificate for Poly Clay Clay giveaway. Okay. So thank you so much for being here. And I will see you next Sunday. And we'll make a pretty egg. I'll have all the eggs and everything prepared. And some old canes. So we'll be able to do stuff. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful Sunday. Bye.